Hello everyone and welcome to your very first training. Today is day one and we're going to be learning about brand and target audience. So this is the first training for the 30 day realtor marketing challenge. And on today's training, I'm going to be teaching you how to basically select the brand, how to brand yourself and how to figure out uh, who your target audience is. So the first thing that we need to do before I actually get started with the training is if you have any questions whatsoever up to this point and after this training and for every single training make sure that you, you ha if you haven't done so go to your members area that where you should have access to if you're watching this video you should be watching it in your members area click on the home uh, tab on the very top and on the left hand side there should be a banner there's actually should be two banners one that looks like this it says have questions join our realtor facebook group this is where I'm going to be answering any questions that you have throughout this training. So if you have any questions or comments, suggestions, anything that you have regarding this specific training, the 30 day challenge, go ahead and click on the banner and it's going to take you straight to the Facebook group page and just join the group and ask any question. Um, if you still have questions and it can't get resolved, then I'm also going to be answering questions live. I'm going to be doing a question and answer a web live webinar once a week. So just go ahead and click on the other banner. This is registered for the next free live webinar and you'll be able to ask any questions live while I'm there. So make sure that you do those two things. Go ahead and click on the Facebook group banner so you can join our Facebook group and also register for the next webinar so you can be live. So with that said, I those are the things that I have in place because I believe in the no realtor left behind. I want to make sure that all of you are successful because you are all uh, able to be successful with this training. Now I'm going to lay it out step by step. I'm going to go straight into the training in each uh, section. So let's get started with that um, and go straight into the training for this first video. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to figure out how you want to brand yourself. So we can see right here, we have major companies and we know uh, basically their brands just by looking at their logo. Um, sometimes some of these brands, like for example, like the McDonald's and the Nike, if you remove the words Nike, you remove the words McDonald's and you just see this logo uh, and you see right here, this this you know kind of check mark looking thing then you'll know that that's nike that's mcdonald's mercedes benz same with this if you remove the name you know what they are so that's the power of branding just by the logo you will know who they are so you want to brand yourself and in order to brand yourself you need to figure out what type of client you want to be working with so find out or you should know what type of client you feel more comfortable working with and once you figure out what type of client you're comfortable working with then that client is the one that we're going to target that the one we're going to go after so here in regards to real estate we have different types of clients that you can actually work with you know there's different types of niches that you can go into within the real estate market and there's different type of clients that you could go after so we're only going to be going after one specific type of client so you have to choose one of these from the list you know um if you're in residential real estate most likely you're going to be doing home buyers and home sellers but even though if you want to work with home buyers and home sellers and you're going to be working with both you're only going to focus on one of them whatever you feel most comfortable with so if you're most comfortable working with home buyers we're going to focus on home buyers, but that's not, I'm not saying that you're not going to be working with home sellers if you're going to focus your marketing on home buyers. It's just what you feel more comfortable with. It's just what you're going to get more deals out of. And the other deals for home sellers are going to come naturally. And I'll show you how. So for example, if you're focusing on home buyers, you're going to be building a large database of home buyers in your local area. So you're going to be the home buyer agent. You're going to be the agent that has the most home buyers that are ready to purchase properties 
in your local area. So guess what? Guess what the number one thing is that sellers want? You know, sellers want uh, to sell their property and who are going to buy their property? Buyers, right? So if you dominate the buyer's market in your local area, you can approach, you can create a marketing campaign where you're using the angle of, hey, I have the biggest database of home buyers that are ready to go pre-approved ready to buy properties right now and they're looking for properties in your specific area if you use that angle and create a marketing campaign like that for sellers then you're highly likely to be able to get listings because obviously a listing agent is going to know that you're going to market to all those ready to buy home buyers so naturally you're also going to be able to generate home seller leads by focusing your marketing on buyers so although you're going to be the major focus is going to be buyers once you build that you'll be able to expand to sellers naturally and also it also works the other way around so if you're more comfortable working with sellers if you just want to be a listing agent then your marketing is going to be focused on sellers your ideal client is going to be the seller so you're going to be listing properties mainly and obviously you know that if you are listing properties and you have a listing out there you're going to be getting a lot of phone calls you're going to be getting uh you know people reaching out to you to be able to find out more about the home so you're going to be getting home buyer leads calling you to inquire about the property that you have listed so that's how you're going to be able to generate home buyer leads also but your focus is going to be on listing homes so your focus is going to be home sellers your ideal client is going to be home sellers you're not going to uh, focus on buyers your marketing all your marketing all your strategy is going to be focused around sellers but naturally you're going to get home buyers as well so that's how you're able to basically focus and that's what i mean by focusing on one single type of client and it's going to be dependent on who you're more comfortable working with so the, uh, there's other types of clients that you can work with there's fix and flip investors you know um most of you know that for the past 10 years i work with fix and flip investors i helped uh, i would do marketing campaigns to generate um basically deals to generate leads of sellers that needed to sell sellers that were in some type of distress and you know our investors the investors that i work with basically purchase their property give them a cash offer and then they would fix the property and i would help them resell the property as well so uh fix and flip investors is my niche that's what i like working with uh, and that's what i'm going to focus on um the other thing that you can work with is you can work with rental owners you can work with commercial owners you know you for you could do leases you could do uh, residential lease, commercial lease, you, you can sell specific type of commercial properties like hotels or retail or uh, multifamily large units, you know, so it's just going to depend just so whatever you're more comfortable working with right now, uh, just choose one of them. And if you're brand new to the industry and you have never worked with on any of them and you do not know who you want to work with, then most likely you're going to start in the residential side and the easiest for you to start with is going to be home buyers so i would suggest you start with home buyers but it's up to you because um if you want to jump straight into home sellers uh home sellers are typically a little bit more picky and they're going to ask you a bunch of questions and if you don't know how to answer those questions you're going to lose a lot of listings so uh if i were you and you're brand new to the industry i would start with home buyers i would choose home buyers and just remember you're going to focus your marketing around home buyers if that's what you choose, but naturally you're also going to be able to get listings later on down the line once you have a massive grip on the home buyers in your local area. And the 30 steps that I'm going to teach you in the next 30 days are specifically designed for you to be able to dominate your market and be able to basically become the home buyer agent for that area or the home seller agent for that area um, or, or any other you know, niche that you decide to go into so it's designed to make you the specialist it's designed to make you the authority in that area that you want to dominate okay so make sure you choose one of these because this is going to be very very important um, if you need a little bit of time to think about what you want to choose then just go ahead and pause this video and make your decision and then we can start moving forward so after you choose that 
we're going to go on to step number two. And step number two is basically going to be trying to identify what is going to make your ideal client uh, attractive to the marketing campaigns that you're going to create. So for example, if you're choosing home buyers, you want to know what is giving them pain right now at this very moment when they're trying to buy a house or what they're thinking of buying a house. So what kind of pain are they going through that you will be able to focus on, that you'll be able to kind of worsen for them so that um, you basically get their attention through marketing. So these three things have been proven to get massive results on marketing campaigns. When you create a marketing campaign that uh, includes all these three things in the marketing ad or campaign, then you're gonna have a high probability of getting a big response and having a successful campaign. So pain is the number one thing that people will uh, take action on. You know, if you if you have back pain, if you have neck pain, and I can tell you that because I've had neck pain for the past six years, I started getting really bad neck pain to the point where I started getting anxiety attacks. And I can tell you, I've spent thousands of dollars on so many things trying to get rid of my neck pain because it's something that's there and it's something that's bothering you every single day so when you have pain you do anything to get rid of that pain so whatever thing i came across that promised me to get rid of that pain i would purchase i would buy i would take action and that's the same thing with any type of other service if you, there's a service if there's a company that provides something that uh, is going to give you uh, or is going to get rid of the pain that you're feeling right now you're going to buy it you're going to take action so that's why we got to determine what is the pain that they're going through what is the pain that they're feeling right now at this very moment so for home buyers it could be that they're frustrated because their offers don't get accepted or it could also be that they have lower credit score and they don't qualify for a certain loan amount you know so if you have if you're working with a lender that has a good credit repair company you can use that angle right there you know you can work with those type of buyers that are don't have a very good credit score but you can get them to the point where you can get them you can basically get them to good credit score you know using a company that does credit repair or something like that um, so that's type you know those are just two specific examples of pain that they could be going through for home buyers the next thing is going to be fear of loss you want to make sure that you let them know what they're going to lose on if they don't do business with you you know nobody wants to miss out on anything and when they see that they have an opportunity to be able to get what they want and it's going to relieve their pain then you're they're more likely to take action if you emphasize what they're going to lose if they don't do business with you so that's fear of loss the third thing the third thing is going to be uh, goals. You know, what does your target audience want to accomplish? What are their main goals of basically doing what they're doing? So if they're a home buyer, what is their main goal of a home buyer? The goal of a home buyer is to purchase a property that is going to fit their budget, the budget that they've determined that they're going to feel comfortable buying. So they want the best house for the best price. You know, it's going to be at the lowest possible payment or the payment that they feel comfortable in so this is just you know quick examples obviously in order for us to figure out exactly what all these things are gonna help us get the reaction get them to uh, respond to our ads then we're gonna do uh, an exercise we're going to complete the ideal customer avatar worksheet in the case of real estate this is gonna be your ideal client that you want to work with so you want to fill out this custom avatar worksheet because it's going to ask you questions where you're going to be able to determine specifically everything about your client. You're going to be able to know everything about your ideal client and the client that you're going to be marketing to. So after you've determined what type of person you're going to work with, you, you want to think about that person. You know, you want to think about the age. You want to think about their gender. So for example, home buyers. I've noticed that the majority of home buyers, you know, over the past 15 years that have been in real estate, the majority of home buyers are actually women. 
And although there's a lot of men out there, there are obviously are home buyers, but typically homes are bought in couples, you know, married couples or engaged couples are going to get married, they're going to move in. So the even though the male is also the home buyer, the female is typically the actual decision maker. They're the ones that have the last word on which property they're going to get. That is that has been the case for me uh, over the past 15 years. Um, you know, you might disagree and that's okay, but this is just an example that I'm giving you. So you might want to focus your marketing on women. You know, that's just one thing that you want to do. So you could either do one for each. You could do one for a buy for male and one for female. If you determine that it's, you know, maybe it's half and half and you want to do both. Uh, or you could do one that's kind of generic, you know, that's kind of in between. You can do that as well. But I, I, if I were you, I would do it specifically just one, either male or female. And um, you can also test these out. You know, you can create an ad that's going to target just females. You're going to create another ad that's going to target just males. Um, another thing that um, I teach on an advanced course is I teach realtors how to go after a specific type of professional people. So, for example, um, I can show you how to work with uh, nurses, how to be the home buyer for nurses, how to be the home buyer for uh, firefighters for policemen how to be the home buyer for architects for engineers so if you're targeting a specific profession for example let's say nurses you want to get uh, business you want to help nurses purchase homes you want to be the nurse expert then uh, the majority of nurses although there's a lot of male nurses the majority of nurses are female so you might want to create a customer avatar for a female nurse you know you might want to do that so that's just an example so uh, the reason why we sometimes focus on professions is because we know that if they're a nurse, typically nurses make good money. They're, you know, they have stable jobs, stable income, and they're highly likely to be able to afford a property. So same with engineers, with doctors, policemen, you know, those are people that have stable jobs and have stable income. They want to own a house. So if you focus on those, they're most likely to be able to qualify for, to be able to purchase a property. So that's just an example of the customer avatar worksheet. So once you complete this worksheet, you'll be able to pinpoint exactly who your ideal customer is, uh, what their gender, marital status, what are their challenges or pain points, where they hang out, what are their objections, their goals, their values. You're gonna be able to determine everything uh, about that person, about your ideal customer, so that when you're ready to craft a marketing campaign, you're going to use this information to make sure that the ad that you're creating is going to be hitting all these points and it's going to be highly attractive. It's going to be laser targeted to this ideal customer avatar that you created. Okay, so the, now the next thing that you want that I want to show you is just an example of a uh, customer avatar completed worksheet. So I'm going to go to my PDF sheet. So there should be a link underneath this page where you can download these customer avatars as well as one that's already completed, which is the one that I'm going to be show you right now. One second. Okay, so when you download it, it should be a fillable PDF form. So you can actually complete it on your computer. So this is, a, this is an example of the avatar that I created. So this is the customer avatar that I'm going to be focusing on. And I'm going to be focusing on home investors. Now, I found that probably about 90% of investors are typically male. So that's where I'm going to focus my avatar on the male investor. So I'm, first thing I'm going to do is name the investor, which right here, his name is going to be Bill. Um, you want to kind of uh, just mentally, you know, give yourself an image of what the investor looks like. So his name is Bill and his age is between 45 and 65 years old. So you kind of just want to give yourself a range between, you know, 10, 15 or 20 years. Um, so it's just going to depend. It's going to depend on the type of buyer that you're working with. For example, if you're working on first time home buyers, if you want to drill down and just work on specifically on first time home buyers, then you're probably are going to be looking at around the age of 25 to 35 for first time home buyers. 
If you're looking to sell, to work with uh, step up buyers, buyers that are, have like a condo, a townhome, and that you want them to purchase a uh, a house or a bigger home, something like that, then you're probably going to be focused on like 30 to 45 years old, 30 to 40 years old, something like that. So that's just an example of what we put there. So the more specific you're able to drill down, the higher your chances are going to be of having a successful marketing campaign. So then the gender is so obviously male for this one. Marital status is going to be married. Age of children. So uh, these type of people typically have kids that are kind of like in middle school, high school, and sometimes even college or married and have kids themselves. So 12 years and up for middle school and up. The location, I'm going to be focusing in the county of Riverside. And then a quote that is going to resonate with them is to increase my ROI on every property. So to increase my return on investment. Uh, occupation. Typically, these people have a college level job. Typically, they have professional jobs. So they could be, again, doctors, nurses, engineers, um, architects. You know, typically, these people have a good profession and now they want to go into something else to help build their wealth. So their annual income for these type of people is going to be around 150000 And that's uh, typically what they make sometimes on their own or sometimes together with their spouse. So this is the type of people that I want to target to that are making 150000 or more combined or by themselves. Uh, level of education, again, I said some college level. So, so typically they have some college um and anything else is they want to do more with their life so that is i'm drilling down exactly what these people are thinking i want to try to get into their head as much as possible and the deeper you go into their head the more success you're going to have on all your marketing campaigns so if we go back to the left hand side their goals and values what are their main goals so an investor's main goal is to make extra money every year uh to grow their savings and their wealth and they want to increase their retirement fund. You know, a lot of these people, the reason they're older is because at this type of age, they start thinking about retiring and they start seeing the 401ks, they start seeing, they start noticing that there's not enough money in the 401k and that they're gonna need a lot more money to be able to retire comfortably. So that's why they start thinking about doing other stuff. And real estate is one of the first things that they think about doing, investing in real estate. So increase their retirement fund, some of them want to generate the monthly cash flow so they want to buy rental properties and increase their monthly cash flow uh, and a lot of them want to just you know they're tired of the job they want to quit their job and retire early and it's the reason why they want to generate monthly cash flow so what are their values what do they value they value their family they value their time and they value their education because these people are typically educated people or even if they don't have any uh, formal education like college level education they know that they have to educate themselves to be able to be successful so they'll take courses they'll take seminars they'll buy products to be able to make sure that uh, they're educated enough to be successful and uh, you know invest in real estate so the next thing is going to be sources of information where do they get their information where do they get the sources uh what kind of books do they read these people read books on investments um self-development for discipline and on marketing also to be able to generate leads uh, what kind of magazines do they subscribe to they they could subscribe to success magazine uh remodeling magazines real estate magazines what kind of blogs and websites? Typically, they're on Zillow, House, which is a remodeling uh, where they sell products uh, for remodeling homes. Home Depot, because they're always buying materials for the properties. Auction.com, where they're looking for new deals. Uh, what kind of conferences do they attend? They attend fix and flip conferences, remodeling, construction. Um, what kind of gurus do they follow? Uh, in real estate investments, there's the big ones are Stan Merrill. Stan Merrill, they're on radio, they're on TV, they're uh, doing a lot of Facebook advertising, online advertising. So these are very big. Stan Merrill, Sean Terry, same. Kent Clothier, same thing uh, down in San Diego. And again, they want to do more in their life. They want to get more out of their life. So what kind of challenges and pain points are they having? So their biggest challenge is that they have a full-time job 
and they don't have enough time. They have very little time to be able to do something else. So those are the major challenges. They also typically have family, which makes it more difficult for them to start a, a side job or a side hustle. Uh, and they're tired of their job. You know, by this time, by this age, they've been working on their job for a certain number of years, you know, for a good amount of years, and they're getting tired of it. And they just want to uh, retire early and quit their job. So that's why they're going into real estate investments. Uh, what are their pain points? They need more money for retirement. They're, you know, they're getting closer to the retirement age and they're getting afraid. They're becoming afraid that they're not going to have enough money to cover the same type of lifestyle that they've been living. And, you know, obviously they either have one choice is to uh, make more money, figure out a way to make more money and increase the retirement fund. Or the other choice is to reduce their expenses and to reduce the, their lifestyle, which a lot of people, obviously, that's not your first option. The first option is to try to increase your retirement fund so you can continue living the same type of lifestyle that you've been living. Uh, the other one, the other pain point is no cash flow. So they're basically living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, they they have a lot of expenses. They're making good money, but they still have a lot of expenses. So they don't have anything, a lot of money saved up. They have some money saved up, but not for, you know, for, to be able to live on for a couple of years. And another major pain point that these people have is that they have kids and they're either getting to the age of going to college or they're already going to college and they need money to help support them through, you know, for their college years. Uh, a lot of these kids, you know, they're able to get part-time jobs, but a parent still has to help them. Or at least as a parent, we don't want to see our kids struggling. We want to make sure that they're focusing on their college and not having to get another job. So that's a major pain point for investors at this age as well. What are their objections? Role and purchase process. So what kind of ob objections would they give you? You know, this in this section, you want to think about what kind of objections uh, they're likely to give you if you're trying to get their business. So uh, if I want to list their properties, they might say, you know, the commission is too high. You're, you know, we don't pay that much because we're investors. We give multiple deals a year. So you're going to have to lower your commission. They could say, um, you know, most realtors don't do enough marketing. Are you going to do enough marketing? Uh, to be able to get the most money for our properties. That's another major issue with real estate investors. Um, they could already be working with an agent. Typically, they already have an agent who they have an exclusive deal with, or it's not really exclusive. It's not written that it's exclusive, but they're comfortable working with because they've been working with them for a long time. So you kind of have to think about that when you're creating a marketing campaign, how you're going to overcome that and also on your sales presentation. So um, another thing, they could be licensed agent themselves and they don't want to commit to a single agent. So if you notice, by having all this information right here, you basically getting into the mind of your ideal customer. You know exactly who your ideal customer is. So now your job is to make sure that you create campaigns that are going to be attractive to this specific customer. So uh, you'll be able to, I'm going to show you how to create campaigns using this sheet right here alone. And everything you do basically is going to be geared to attract this very person that you are right here. So one of the major problems in real estate is that nobody knows, you know, not a lot of real estate agents know who they're actually trying to get business from, you know, who they're actually targeting. They don't really know. They know they're going after sellers. They know they're going after buyers, but they don't know what struggles those people are going through. They don't know what, you know, what they value. They don't know their age range. They don't know what type of jobs they have, how much money they make, you know, what, what they like, what they don't like, what objections they have, what keeps them up at night, basically the pain points. And the ones that are successful, they know all of this about their clients. If you're very brand new to this industry, then it might be a little bit more difficult to figure this out. But right now you have a huge advantage and it's called the internet. You know, you can always Google, uh, you know, a lot of these things. You can say, what is the, uh, average age of a home buyer and just Google it. You know, you might get that, you know, and enter your city. 
You know, you, you might get an answer for that. You, you get a lot of answers for a lot of these things nowadays on the internet. And if you don't, you know, if you're brand new to real estate, sit down with your broker, sit down with your broker, make an appointment and have them help you complete this form because I can guarantee you that your broker knows this information. If you've been working this on the, if you were, if you've been working in real estate for at least five to 10 years, you should have know exactly you know what your ideal customer is you should be able to complete this form the more precise the more focused and the more complete you complete this form the easier and the more successful you're going to be when it comes to marketing the more leads you're going to get and the more type of people you're going to get that you really want to work with because this is the type of people that i want to work with so this is the type of people that i'm going to attract because this is the uh, who i'm targeting so this is going to be your actual target avatar so with that said, now you know exactly how to complete a customer avatar sheet for your ideal customer. So decide who you're going to target, what type of client you want to work with. Complete the customer avatar worksheet, and that's going to be it for this video training. I hope you learned. I hope you had a lot of uh, valuable knowledge and information. I cannot emphasize how valuable completing this form is going to be for you it's going to be for your entire business because now from now on you're going to know exactly who you're marketing to you're going to know exactly what you need to say to be able to attract that customer that you want to, that you want to work with and you'll be able to attract better customers because you're going to be working with customers that you feel comfortable working with so it's going to make it way easier for you to be successful versus always attracting the wrong type of people attracting customers that you don't even feel comfortable working with so by completing this step you'll be able to do that so that's going to be your homework make sure you complete the worksheet down below this video you should have the downloads for the male avatar the female avatar and the example that i just finished so that you're able to use it as reference to complete your um your ideal customer avatar so again if you have any questions whatsoever make sure you uh, join our Facebook group. Click on the banner on the homepage of the members area. It's going to take you to the Facebook group. Join our Facebook group. P put in your comments, your questions, your suggestions, anything that comes to mind that could help this training be better. Make sure you enter it there. I'll be answering questions there. And also make sure you register for the next free live webinar where I'll be able to answer your questions live. I hope you enjoyed this training. It's only going to get better from here, so make sure you're always liking our videos. If you're watching this on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, like our videos, share them with your, you know, people that you think could get value out of it, uh, other real estate agents, other colleagues, you know, other members of your team. Go ahead and share it, like it, comment, and if you have any questions, like I said, go to the Facebook group and ask any questions and register for the next webinar. Thank you for completing this training. This is going to be your first training. I look forward to see you on video number two. That's going to be day two, the, the next video. So congratulations on completing this training. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care.